here we are in ArcGIS Pro. It uh, costs $100 per year for individuals. There's also a free version or a free alternative that uh, is very similar and functions uh, pretty much the same. It's called QGIS. And you can just download it from f for free online. Uh, I have dual monitors, so what you're seeing here is me dragging files from my right monitor. Uh, and I'll let this run here for a minute or two so you can get an idea of how quickly this process goes. No need to really narrate this, we just let it run. Oh, one thing I would like to say is this, uh, what you're seeing here is kind of an unusual circumstance. The number of files, uh, this is just the way that uh, Swiss Topo sets it up. Now here I'm going to selecting under Analysis Tools, typing in New Mosaic, select Mosaic to New Raster, Now actually I went over there and clicked and drug all of those files over there in my editing. I accidentally cut that out. And here we're just selecting the file to save it to. What I was going to say is if you're working with like USGS uh, DIMMs, you'll only need like three or four files to cover the same area. They're uh, three meter resolution, almost as fine a resolution. These are two meter, but they have a much larger footprint. Now here we want to select a 32-bit float. And then we hit run. Now I cut out the most of this. This takes so oh, probably three minutes to run. Okay, here I've brought the um, dim into Photoshop. It's a 32-bit uh, grayscale image to convert it so that I can use it. Just go to image mode. 16 bits per channel and this is the it see Photoshop sees it as an HDR image which I guess it is and all we have to do is hit equalize histogram and boom voila right, please pardon my at, editing. Uh, last video was the very first video I've ever made and this is the second so my skills are a bit lacking at this stage of the game. Some of my work's a little rough. Hopefully I'll get better with time. Um, now that we've brought our dims uh, into Photoshop and have converted them to a usable height map we need to understand a few key principles before we begin working on it. So the next three entries into this little program will familiarize with you, hopefully, with some key principles uh, that we need to understand. Sculpting and smoothing a map in terrain editor is like working from 2,000 feet up, sort of like looking at the ground from an airplane and when you get down it looks completely different. So my goal is to try and produce a map that hopefully looks like the real area. So we're going to adjust grayscale values in our map at several key locations so that the elevations and most importantly the changes in elevation 
reflect the real world location. To be able to do that, we need to know what the grayscale values produce in terms of elevation. The gain will produce terrain from 0 to 1024 meters. The values in a 16-bit grayscale image range from 0 to 32,768. So pure whites, 32,768. Take any elevation from 0, this is key, from 0 to 1024, multiply it by 32, and you'll get its corresponding grayscale value. So all of your terrain elevations, their grayscale value varies by a factor of 32. Which I found it interesting when I was plotting this to determine these numbers. These numbers right here look quite familiar, don't they? So we now know how to make adjustments to our height map and we can enter actual values into our height map that's going to give us a corresponding elevation. So our goal is to be able to take elevations from either Google Earth or a contour map that we might have and convert them to the relative in-game elevations. Of course, in the real world, elevations are measured from sea level. In the game, they're measured from the sea floor. So in the simplest case or scenario, we need to add our below ground depth to the elevation that we pulled off of Google Earth. Now in a case like this where our base ground level is close to sea level, that 100 meter high hill, we need to add our water depth. So in game, that 100 meter hill is a 150 meter hill. But this is only true if our base ground level is close to sea level. So in game our base ground level works out best if it's around 40 to 50 meters. If the area we're modeling is far inland its base ground level is probably going to be well above sea level. So we need to factor this in when converting real world elevations to in-game elevations. Well, let's take a scenario where the real world base or flat ground is 500 meters above sea level and our in-game corresponding value is 50. We need to subtract out the difference between real and base elevations. <clears throat> so we just take the subtract 50 from 500 gives us 450. So our measured elevation is 600 meters minus 450 meters gives us a resulting 150 meters. And what I usually do is it makes it much simpler if you like use Google Sheets and set up a spreadsheet uh, where you just create columns with, I do it every 10 meters, just set up a column and just put a formula in there to do this calculation. So if I take a measurement off of Google Earth, I can simply go to that chart and take the real, go down until I hit the real world measurement and then read off the corresponding or uh, elevation for in-game usage. This is the procedure to make one grayscale value 
reflect another grayscale value. So here I have two grayscale values. We're going to make this bar match the value here. I'm showing this to you as an example of how we can input and adjust grayscale values in our map to get them as close as possible as to what we need. So we can take layers, new adjustment, curves. We want to place a color sampler tool on our bar that we want to change. This is that, see it's number one, here's number one, we want to change that to grayscale. Oh, 16-bit. Now, here's our 16-bit grayscale, and I can see that that is a value of 7,666. Take the hand, click, and that places a point on our grayscale value. That registers 9169. All we have to do is take the up arrow key on our keyboard, going the wrong way, go down, 7666. And we have 7666. Merge the layers, and as you can see, we have a perfect match. Thanks for watching. If you like the content I'm producing, please hit the like button and, subs and subscribe. I choose to make real world maps because real is always more interesting and engaging. The research that goes into making real world maps provides us with an opportunity to get to know places we otherwise would never know. I hope these methods will empower you to make not only more accurate maps, but beautiful and compelling ones as well. Next time we will make adjustments to our height map using the methods I just described. We will end up with a height map complete with formed rivers and streams with proper slope and drainage built in. The detail and accuracy will be built into the map. Very little sculpting in the map editor will be needed. So please join me next time as we dive deeper into this fascinating subject.